Every part of the world has graffiti. I think it just means to, you know, be alive. Say that I was here. Go back to like Kilroy was here. That's really, I think, most all there is to it. We are at Load of Fun. It's now known as Graffiti Alley. It used to be an old furniture factory. A guy named Sherwin Mark turned it into a gallery space and studio space. There were a lot of kids just coming in this alley and scribbling, you know, racial slurs, profanity, things like that. And he said, I run an arts venue. I can do something more with this. Got a bunch of people together. They painted the whole alley top to bottom, went to the city, and he literally took the pictures of the event that he did here and then what was here before. And they said, yes, we'll let you have your space. This is a great place to, you know, see what people are doing and how unregulated graffiti kind of <laughs> makes a mess of things. You can see this guy clearly knows how to write. He has some hand style. Um, but then people scribble over it with no real rhyme or reason of why they're doing it. So that's why typically you'll see quick tags in here and no real pieces. In the 70s and 80s, there weren't really rules about how people write. So the public got really upset about the nuisance. But these days, it's almost like there's an unwritten rule, you know, if out of sight, out of mind. Graffiti writers get to go in various places around the city, do their craft, not be hassled by anybody. Unlike Graffiti Alley, this is a real graffiti spot. You know, it's an abandoned place. You know, nobody comes here but writers. Graffiti artists each take their own space. They don't go over each other for the most part. Most people spend time doing pieces. Um, they're very detailed. They take a lot of time. There's a piece here you can see that's not finished. Got all the colors laid out. He just needs to put a clean outline. Writers that come into places like this, they're looking for a wall that's clean, that'll showcase what they're looking to do. Sometimes they don't even know what they're painting until they see the space. Each city has its own style of writing. Um, New York is really bubbly letters. Baltimore is lean, has a hard slant, and starts small and gets big. The funny thing I learned is the guys that started it were left-handed. They tend to write with the lean. Very tight interlocking letters, super intricate fills, large 3D drop shadows. Um, those are things that you'll typically see in a lot of classic Baltimore pieces. It becomes a bit of a tradition. Paying, you know, your homage to the people that came before you uh, while also still trying to be original. This place has been going on for decades. People come out here to, you know, usually put up their best stuff or to remember somebody. Places like these are usually in a way more like, like galleries, if you will, uh, museums for graffiti. Um, this Vos piece, it's close to 10 years old. You can see it's flaking off on the wall. Hundreds of layers of paint. I think everybody approaches graffiti in a different way. I wouldn't tell anybody one way or the other but just understand there's something out there that's creative. Go out and explore, you'll find some things that you find pretty fascinating.